We have the latest on the expiring WWE contract of Drew McIntyre is this former AEW star set to return to WWE and two top free agents are set to sign for AEW. But first, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to WrestlePlanet so you don't miss the latest pro wrestling news. I'm currently still looking to get 50,000 subs and we're not too far away now. And if everyone that watches this video that hasn't subscribed does, then we'll be able to hit that number pretty quickly. So if you're a regular watcher of the channel, I'd appreciate you helping me out. But with that out of the way, let's begin by taking a look at a secret meeting between MJF and AEW. Former AEW World Champion MJF hasn't been seen since he dropped the belt back in December 2023 at World's End, where he was defeated by Samoa Joe before the reveal of Adam Cole as the mysterious devil. Since then, Max has been removed from the official AEW roster page on the company's website. Whilst all MJF related merchandise was taken down from Shop AEW, this playing up to the claim that his deal expired at the start of the year. With that said, PW Insider has released a status update on the man that's better than us, confirming that he is still locked into an AEW contract and isn't a free agent as suspected, although he is still recovering from a series of injuries that continue to keep him out of action, and the report notes. For those who have asked about former AEW champion MJF, we are told that he's still working to recover from his multiple injuries. Whilst he is not listed on the AEW roster, the belief is he remains locked into a deal with the company. PW Insider would also reveal details of a meeting that recently took place between MJF and AEW management, although the details of this are still unknown and they would add. While he was not in attendance at AEW Big Business in Boston a few weeks back, PWInsider.com has confirmed that the day after that event, MJF was in Boston to meet with AEW officials. MJF has not been backstage at any AEW events since exiting storylines. The report notes that there is currently no word on when MJF will be returning to the ring, but let's hope it's sooner rather than later. Next up, a WWE World Champion has been forced to vacate their title. Ahead of last night's episode of Monday Night Raw, PW Insider would confirm that WWE Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley had suffered an injury on last week's episode of The Red Brand, adding that she may be forced to relinquish her belt. Fightful Select would then confirm this, noting that talk of the title vacation stems back to as early as last Wednesday. The knock appeared to occur during a backstage segment involving Ripley and Liv Morgan that saw the latter attack the champion from behind before throwing her into a wall and dropping her with a chair. Well, fast forward to the opening of Raw last night where Rhea Ripley would open the show along with her title belt laid out in front of her. With fans knowing what to expect when the segment began, they would begin to chant thank you mommy, this before Ripley even started speaking, before she confirmed what had been reported earlier that day. Rhea would announce that due to injury, she will be forced to vacate her WWE Women's World Championship, this whilst aiming her promo at Liv Morgan in order to allow the two to continue their feud upon her return. Liv herself has even continued to pour fuel on the fire, continuing to mock the former champion again to add more heat to the rivalry. WWE CCO Triple H would take to X after the segment to thank Rhea for her reign, noting she'll be back stronger than ever and he would write, Absolutely no doubt in my mind that Rhea Ripley will come back tougher, stronger and more dominant than ever. Thank you Rhea for a reign that the entire WWE Universe can be proud of. As for the length of her absence, Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio would reveal that the injury is a sprained AC joint which is part of the shoulder and it will take 4-6 to six weeks for Rhea to regain mobility in her arm, although it could take up to 3 months to be ring ready once again. In the meantime, WWE have announced that next week's episode of Raw will see a brand new women's world champion crowned, although no specific details were given on how this will happen. And next up, Tony Schiavone has addressed his reaction to the airing of the All in London backstage footage. Last week's episode of AEW Dynamite would feature a segment that divided the internet wrestling community as the company would air the backstage footage of the altercation between CM Punk and Jack Perry from AEW All in London, the incident that led to Punk's termination from AEW. The footage would air to advance and get people talking about the upcoming match between FTR and the Young Bucks, although the move didn't come with 
conduct its criticism. One talking point coming out of the show was the on-screen reaction from commentator Tony Schiavone, who seemed less than impressed before and after the footage aired, with many joking that he was having flashbacks to his time in the dying days of WCW. This week, Schiavone would address the talk on his What Happened When podcast, playing off his reaction as nothing more than kayfabe, and Tony would say, My facial reaction to what happened was me, my facial reaction trying to uh, put more heat on the bucks for being assholes within the storyline itself. I did not have any reaction to the footage we'd see, we saw, because I don't give a damn. So I was not upset at the promotion. I was not upset at Tony Khan. I was not pissed off about what we had shown. I was trying to be fully in the moment of the angle, which is the Bucks bitching about FTR, not sh you know wanting to shake their hands and getting fucked around right. and everything. That's what I was doing. But of course, everybody wants to create their own story, and that's fine. That's what social media is about. Social media is about idiots coming together and trying to come up with their own ideas. So. Tony would then directly address the comparisons to the infamous WCW finger poke of doom incident, a moment that's been highlighted as one of the killing blows for the once popular company. Tony would reject any kind of WCW and AEW comparison and added, Some people are saying, all oh, the footage that you were showing is like the, uh, is like the finger poke, poke of doom moment for, for AEW. Well, you know what? That's what you want it to be because you wanted to, you want to see us fail. And there's no way, because I was in both companies, there's absolutely no way that you can compare us to WCW. You can't. You may want to. You may think you're right. You're wrong. You cannot compare us to WCW. I was there at both. You were not. Next up, we have the latest on the expiring contract of Drew McIntyre. On last night's video, we would discuss a report from PW Insider that revealed some more information regarding former WWE World Champion Drew McIntyre's deal with WWE, with them noting that it was set to expire sometime in the next five to six weeks, which would mean he could potentially become a free agent between late May and early June if new terms cannot be agreed. Adding to this, Fightful Select have now provided even more information on the matter revealing that Drew's contract is up before June and they would write Fightful Select has learned that the deal is actually up before June. Those that we've spoken to in WWE said that McIntyre has been professional in handling the contract situation even though things moved along much later than many expected. Fightful would add that Dan Ventral, who was recently replaced as EVP of Talent Relations, only reached out to McIntyre over a new contract in March. This after his feud with CM Punk had already began, as had the build towards his WrestleMania match with Seth Rollins. The fact that Drew's deal ends before June further confirms that despite being advertised for the upcoming Scottish pay-per-view Clash in the Castle, he's currently not under contract for the event as it stands. And next is this former AEW star set to return to WWE. Uncle Howdy, aka Bo Dallas, has been dropping clues over his upcoming WWE return for several weeks at this point, with the brother of the late Bray Wyatt set to carry the lantern going forward. Clues have suggested that when he returns, he won't be alone, with the mysterious figure recently stating, You forgot about us. The ongoing teases coincide with the recent news that former Wyatt family member Eric Rowan has pulled out of some independent bookings due to new contractual obligations, with speculation mounting that he's signed a WWE contract and will be part of an upcoming faction. However, it seems that we may now know the identity of yet another name that could be linking up with Howdy in the near future, this following another cryptic clue that appeared on WWE Raw last night. During the entrance for the New Day, a QR code would appear on screen that led to two images. When overlaid, this would show a URL of a website. When you go to the website in question, and image and a video can be found. Firstly, the image depicts a moment from the Plato story, The Allegory of the Cave, with arts of thought describing the image as follows. Plato's allegory of the cave begins with an image of prisoners chained in a cave who are unable to turn their heads. These prisoners can only view the wall in front of them. Directly behind the prisoners is an infinitely burning fire, and between the fire and the prisoners is the pathway where puppeteers walk. The puppeteers hold up images of animals and real objects that cast shadows upon the wall that the prisoners are viewing. The puppeteers also make noises to go along with the puppets. However, since the prisoner cannot turn their head, they are 
unaware of what is actually happening behind them. These prisoners perceive the shadows for the purest form of reality and do not know what is actually creating the shadows. To the prisoners, a world beyond the shadows does not exist. It is also evident that the prisoners do not even have enough curiosity to discover what is truly happening. With that in mind, the clue is obviously up for interpretation, however it appears to suggest that Uncle Howdy is either the puppeteer or is somebody that will free the prisoners from their false reality. As for who could end up being guided by Howdy, the recently departed AEW star Matt Hardy would share a clip of the QR code appearing on Raw, this on his ex account, perhaps a hint that he'll be one of the members of the possible Wyatt 6 group. Not only this, but the current free agent would share an image of himself in front of a painting of wings alongside the caption spreading my wings, a further hint that he's got something on the horizon. Now before we wrap up this Uncle Howdy section, let's quickly address something that continues to come up in the comments whenever his return is mentioned, that being the Dreadmare channel on YouTube. Dreadmare is ran by the same person that produced the It Begins Again videos during Bray Wyatt's initial hiatus from WWE following his release in 2021. There's been some debate over if Dreadmare is officially linked to WWE or Bo Dallas, with us now having official confirmation that it isn't. If it wasn't already obvious enough by AI voices used in Dreadmare's videos, or the It Begins Again characters that failed to appear on WWE television following Bray's WWE return. A disclaimer recently appeared on the description of the channel at some point this month, albeit it's only visible when you open up a particular window on the channel. The description as of April 16th reads, Disclaimer, this channel is all about the realm of Dreadmare and its stories about wrestling. We want to make it crystal clear that Dreadmare is in no way affiliated with WWE or any of its contracted stars. It's not associated with the legendary Bo Dallas, the mysterious Uncle Howdy, or any wrestling promotion mentioned in future videos. The Wayback Machine shows that this description was not present as recently as April 2nd, although hopefully this debate can now finally come to a close after years of the channel misleading their audience, a practice that became particularly distasteful when pretending to be Bray Wyatt's grieving brother whilst tricking Wyndham's grieving fanbase. Next up, two top free agents are set to sign for AEW. All Elite Wrestling have made several acquisitions from the wrestling free agency market this year, with Will Ospreay, Kazushika Okada and Mercedes Monet topping that list. With that said, as the men's and women's divisions continue to grow, it looks like we're now able to see another team added to the tag team ranks. According to Bodyslam.net, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, aka the Motor City Machine Guns, are close to putting pen to paper on an AEW contract, this after their deals with TNA Wrestling expired at the end of March, and the report notes. There had previously been hopes within TNA that the Motor City Machine Guns would re-sign with the company, however it was reported that the general belief was that the duo was expected to land in All Elite Wrestling, which now appears to be the case. After speaking to sources, I can now confirm that the Motor City Machine Guns are heading to AEW. Sources have told me that AEW and the Motor City Machine Guns are working on finalising a deal. It was noted that the deal is not going to be finalised for a bit, however the decision has been made and a deal will be worked out. The Motor City Machine Guns are widely considered to be one of the best tag teams of their generation, picking up IWGP, ROH and TNA Tag Gold along the way. They're also both former TNA World Champions in their own right, with them set to attempt to add AEW Gold to their resume in the near future. 